Uh, welcome back everyone. In this tutorial we will be installing uh, full screen mode on Kali Linux. In previous two tutorials we installed VirtualBox and we booted up our Kali Linux machine. So right now you should be seeing same as I do. This little screen right here. So first thing we want to do, well basically for this tutorial you basically just want to follow up with my commands. Uh, we will explain all these commands later on but for now on just uh, for the sake of installing the full screen mode you want to click on this right here which is the linux terminal it should open up the this box which basically we use to give commands to the operating system to the machine itself now as you can see the root here part basically represents the account that we are on so currently we are on the root account and the kelly is the host name you gave to this machine so this part should be the same for us and uh, this part could be anything you named it in the process of installation. So just for now we want to go to the Firefox which is at the top of this list of the programs. You want to go to the Firefox and click on this. It will open up, uh, I believe automatically it will open up the Cal Linux page which we need in this case in order to take some of the things it provides us right here. So just one second, it says welcome to Firefox. And here we can see um, as the most visited sites, even though we haven't visited anything yet, it basically just says fancy security, Kali Linux, Kali Docs, Kali Tools, and exploit uh, slash DB. We basically right now want to go to the Kali Docs and there Just one second, it is a little bit slow. It should load up any moment. It might be just taking a lot of time because this is first time uh, opening Firefox in this virtual machine. There it is, it opened it. Now, once it loaded this page, as I said, you want to go to Kelly Docs and you want to scroll down. You want to find <coughs> Sorry for my voice. It's kind of rough right now. I was ill. But basically, you want to find the sources.list repositories. It should be anywhere here. Here it is. Kelly sources.list repositories. It should be named same for you. And just click here on that. It will lead us to this page where we want to copy the Kali rolling repository. Or basically the first thing that uh, here it is, regular repositories. It says here on a standard clean install of Kali Linux, you should have the following entry present in etc apt sources.list. Now we will copy this just in case. We don't have it, but we probably do, but just in case we will copy it. You can close this page now. And now we want to use our terminal for the first time. So just follow up with these commands. Uh, you do not need to wonder at the moment what they do. Just type in the same as I do and you should be good to go. We want to go to the etc apt sources.list. Oh, pardon me. Just go, just go cd etc apt. And as you can see, we changed our directory to etc apt. And we want to open sources.list so just type in nano sources.list click enter and it should open up this page now it should look similar as mine does and basically these are just bunch of uh, linux repositories from where you will uh, do your updates of the system all of these which have hash before them are not being used while you're updating the system. So if we delete this hash, something that was um, after the hash will be used in the updating section. But currently we only want this here. So if you do not have this, just copy paste the thing that we copied from the website, the repository, and just click here, right click, paste, and it will basically copy the same thing right here. You didn't need to do that because it was already there, but in case it wasn't there, you want to copy and paste it right here. Or basically anyway, you can copy it at the at the top or at the bottom. 
because all of these other with hash will not be used. So we want to save this file and it says right here to write out, which means to save, we want to press CTRL plus O. It will ask us file name to write, sources.list, just click here enter. And in order to close this, click CTRL plus Y or Z, depending on your keyboard. So once again, we want to go non-sources.list. This is just me recapturing what just happened. You copy and paste this right here without the hash. So this is the thing that we copied from the website. You press CTRL plus O to save, enter, and then CTRL plus Y or Z. There we go. So now that you did that, you want to go with apt update command. This will update our apt, which will basically just, uh, if in case we uh, change something in the sources.list, it will update that. But since we didn't, we only just copy and pasted the thing that was already there. We do not need to do this, but we will do it just in case. So click here on apt update and it will connect to the Kali download or basically any site that you have linked in the sources.list file and it will check for any updates there. Since we only have one uh, repository listed there, it only took it from there, but there are currently no new updates, only upgrades that we will do at the end of this tutorial. So right now what you want to do is go type in this command. First off, if you want to clear the screen and make it a little bit more pretty, just type in clear and it will clear everything from here. So now that what we want to do is type in apt install linux headers uh, dollar sign open a parenthesis u name and then r. So we want to type in this command which in most cases won't work right now. As you can see it will give us some of the errors unable to locate package linux headers this Linux headers, it is unable to locate it. So now what we want to do, first of all, to check what your Linux header version is, you can type it uname slash r. Just type in that and it will give us our current headers uh, version, which is 4.18.0. Now what we want to do is basically, in order to find the new Linux headers version, we want to type apt install Linux headers and then at the end, we want to type in the this star sign. I'm not really sure how it's called in English, but it's basically on shift eight for me. It's probably for you as well. Uh, just click here, enter, and it will give us a bunch of these options, which we do not want to install. So it will says, do you want to continue? We want to press here, no. We just wanted to check here for the Linux headers current version which is usually going to be the first one, but basically you're just searching something that looks like this. And we can see right here, since our version was 4.18.0, the current and new version one is 4.19.0. So we just need to copy this part of the section. So 4.19.0, Kali1, AMD64, just copy, copy it. And now that we copy that, we can clear the screen again. And type in this command apt install linux image and here now we paste the thing that we copied which is our new version which is 4.19.0 kali1 amd64 now in the time of you watching this it might not be this version so don't just type in what i typed here and follow the process and just copy the current version the newer version and use it in this command so apt install linux image and we just click here yes and it will basically download the new version of Linux headers. Now after this process which will take I believe a few minutes maybe even less we want to reboot the system. So I'll catch up when this finishes. Now we can see that it finished the installation of Linux headers so first thing we want to do after that is reboot our machine. 
just type in reboot and it will restart your Cal Linux machine. We want to just click X on this so it doesn't bother us. And now we wait for the machine to boot up and a few more commands right after that and we are ready to go. After the installation of full screen mode, I will be showing you some of the basic commands in the Linux terminal, uh, which you need to know in order to continue with the learning of ethical hacking. Those are just some of the basics you must know in order to get yourself used to, to the Linux operating system and in order to run some of the programs. So it is essential for you to learn them. There are like uh, thousands and thousands of commands. You do not need to know all of them, just like 20 basic commands. And all of the others you can search on the internet for your own needs. So here it put it up into our login screen. So once again, we type in root as username and password, which is one, two, three, four for me. And right now we want to install the Linux headers. We downloaded them last time, the image version of our headers version. And now we want to install the current Linux headers from the terminal. So just go on the terminal. If you do not have it for some reason right here, you can open it with right click on the desktop. Oops, settings, let me just check why there isn't an open terminal option. There should be. Well, for some reason there isn't. So you can just go to the files, for example, and right click on anywhere. So basically anywhere and open in terminal and it will open up the terminal. So now we want to run this command, which is apt install. One second, it's not typing for me for some reason. Oh, here we go. So apt install Linux headers dollar sign and parentheses open your name minus R. Now, basically, what this means, in case you're wondering, the dollar sign means that after this minus sign, it will just put the output of this command. So let's delete this. As I showed you before, the output of uname minus r command will be our current Linux headers version, which was before 4.18.0, but since we updated it, it should be 4.19.0. As we can see, we successfully updated it last time. So now, when we run this command, which I typed a few seconds ago, apt install Linux headers minus uh, dollar sign, parentheses open, I can type, your name minus R, it will just pa paste this, be, uh, it will just paste the output of your name and minus R uh, instead of the dollar sign, you name minus R. So just click here, enter on this command. It will ask you, do you want to continue? We want to click here Y, just type here Y, Y for yes, no and for no. We want to continue and it will install our Linux headers, newer, newer version. Now, I'm not sure how long this will take. It could take a few seconds or a few minutes. I will be back when it is over. Now, as we can see, this has finished, so it basically took around one to two minutes. The next thing we want to go is on the devices in the upper left corner, uh, fifth from the start, so devices, and we want to go insert guest additions image. It will ask us a question if we want to automatically start it, uh, intended to be run. We do not want to automatically start it since it won't work now we want to do to run this command change direction uh, uh, change directory pardon me slash media slash cd rom once you type that you will go to the to this directory which is slash media slash cd rom and here if you type ls which is listing all the files in that directory it will give us a bunch of files in most, uh, we are not even interested. So we are only interested in this file, vbox linux editions.run. 
Now what we want to do is change the mode of this VBox Nimbus editions dot run. If it is not already an executable for you, you just type in this command, which is uh, basically our uh, basically this ch mode stands for change mode. Plus x stands for uh, making it an executable, and we want to type the name of the file. You can type it like me, or you can just copy and paste it. Here I will show you. Copy paste, and it will change the mode. Now it will say that the change permissions is read only file system. It doesn't matter for now. We it might work for you, it might not for, it will work for you, uh, basically it just doesn't matter since it is already an executable for me. So you just type in the next command, which is the last command, and we just copy paste the same thing, so sh dot slash and then the name of the file, and you just run this and it should install the VirtualBox guest editions, which will hopefully make our machine full screen. This shouldn't take a lot of time, I believe, we will see. And after the installation of this, our machine should be full screen. Welcome back everyone. Uh, my Basically my virtual machine crashed for some reason, not really sure why. After the um, last command has finished, which was sh.vboxlinuxeditions.run, it crashed after that, so I just restarted the the machine and basically now it is full screen. So in case your crashes as well, just try rebooting the machine and it should go full screen. Right now if I type in root and test 1234, you can see that the machine is right now going full screen. There is no, no uh, there is not uh, the white space around the virtual machine. It is full screen, and if you want to remove the lower and upper part as well, you can just go on view and go full screen mode. And right now our machine is full screen, we can open a terminal, we can enlarge it, and now we have a platform to work on. So, play, so basically that is that from this tutorial. If you had any problems or any errors which are common in installing VirtualBox guest editions, there are lots of errors that occur from time to time. Just copy the error and paste it in Google and most likely you will find a solution to the problem, which will probably be just a simple command or something. Now in my case I didn't really have any error, uh, except for my uh, virtual machine crashing, but we got the full screen and we are set to go. Now in the next lecture we will cover some of the basic commands that you will almost always use from now on. So I hope I see you there and uh, take care. Bye.